Hi everyone, Richard Lewis here. Uh, time for another video. My Twitter feed has blown up the last uh, few days. Just loads of shit going on. One of the things people have been hitting me up about is drug use in esports. You know, when are you gonna write something about it? Now, this video isn't going to be particularly detailed or revelatory. Um, I have been working on an article which got put to bed was working on it about a year ago about Adderall use in esports in particular interviewed a bunch of people about it people who fixed it it was mainly pertaining to MLG events then it just got sidelined um, and, and never really got to do anything with it just other stuff came up you know so uh, it, it's something that I'll, I might try and recycle some of the information about that uh, from that into a newer article or, or whatever, but um, it could also go the way of the NASL article and just sit there and I might not do anything with it. Completely depends. But anyway, what this video can be is a sort of quick response to sort of letting you know exactly where we are with uh, drugs, both recreational and performance enhancing in esports. Now, I've been around the scene for a, a long, long time, and certainly in 2005, 2006, in Counter-Strike, to be honest, over here in Europe, there wasn't really a lot going on drugs-wise in terms of performance-enhancing drugs. People used to get wrecked, like stoned, you know, before games and stuff. But I was about it, really. Like, it, it, it wasn't a big deal. There wasn't any competitive impetus for performance-enhancing drugs. The prize pots were really small. The scene was still fledgling. Nobody was ever going to do any sort of performance-enhancing drugs. Because it just, you know, it just, the tournaments were so small. Now, it starts changing with the uh, arrival of CGS. All of a sudden... You've got the opportunity to be on TV, opportunity to be salaried. And what's interesting here is, of course, is that you've got Europe and NA coming together. And you'll, you'll see why this is significant in a moment. But I, I remember attending the Combine. And uh, there was a, a, a number of teams, actually, that were doing sort of outside, going out, thinking outside the box to try and get these competitive edges. There was all sorts of schemes and, and, and scams. But one of the things that were being distributed by the European players were beta blockers. And beta blockers were being taken by a lot of UK players on the basis that uh, they, you know, they're going to calm your nerves. They're going to make you, uh, you know, keep your heart rate down and regulate it in, in tense situations. Now, I'm not a doctor. I can't really speak to the... Uh, veracity of these claims but there were a number of players that swore by them and used to pop beta blockers before big crunch games to try and keep on top of their nerves now during CGS the NA scene had been popping Adderall for fucking a good while Adderall was already established in fact Adderall in American esports, you know, wherever it was, like say Halo for me is what kind of made it famous like I'll be honest right I grew up uh, in, in a juxtaposition, you know, so I was like part in, in Wales, part in the northeast. In Wales, you brought up sort of magic mushrooms everywhere. Uh, when you get up north, again, there's a bit more of a relaxed attitude uh, to drugs than perhaps some other geographical parts of the world. So I was fucking no stranger to drugs. I'm not shy about it. You know, I used to just pop handfuls of anything and not really give a fuck. You know, when you when you take your magic mushrooms as a teenager, you're gonna have a relaxed attitude towards drugs as an adult. It just, you know, it just that's just how it goes. So it makes sense to me to probably say that I, I just as part of this video, you know, I'm kind of a not a drug advocate, but I don't particularly like prohibition rules. I don't particularly like the sort of war on drugs. I've got a very laissez-faire attitude when it comes to drug use. So that's just complete disclosure here, right? just in case you think I'm foisting an agenda on you. But anyway, I didn't know what the fuck Adderall was because, well, apart from the fact that uh, pharmaceutical names are very different uh, um, across the Atlantic, 
it just we didn't have that spate of sort of ADHD diagnosis and hyperactivity diagnosis. I'd heard of Ritalin, but never really heard of Adderall. And then when I started talking to American pros, it was pretty much a topic of conversation like all the fucking time. Adderall, Adderall, Adderall. So that started getting bunched over to the Europeans. And the Europeans started hyping about Adderall. In fact, like they were paying well over the fucking odds to get their hands on it before tournaments. And again, there were a number of top teams that were taking Adderall, both UK and Europe. It was just uh, the done thing. In fact, when I started, and this is much, much later after this, I noticed as well that there were some StarCraft pros doing Adderall. Um, and and it was it was it was the one drug that sort of seemed to really permeate through every esports scene. Didn't matter what scene I was in, I was always hearing about Adderall and people using Adderall and you know do, do they want to buy Adderall and whatever. So that was kind of the for Counter Strike the sort of big melting pot because it was like the NA dirty little secret, and then we had this cross pollination. It started spreading out to to other scenes. And, uh, you know, I, I, I got to say, again, e even even as late as like 2006, 2007 in Europe, it was only like the super elite teams that were using Adderall. In fact, uh, when once we had sort of the post-CGS era and it kind of, CSS kind of settled down again, I used to go to lands and what people would just use was basically cocaine. Like, that was what... Uh, if you went to certain lands uh, and hung around with certain teams, uh, what they would take to sort of g themselves up for games was was coke. That's <laughs> that happened. <laughs> so, um, and again, I'm not going to fucking name any names, and I'm not going to say whether or not maybe I was like, yeah, I'll test that out for you. But the the point is that they there was definitely this attitude that it come into the scene and that was that actually the way lands work the way lands are structured you're not going to be able to get through to the end unless you do something that's going to peak your levels of performance now if you don't know what Adderall is and what Adderall does like I didn't do and I consider myself you know really educated in drugs let's say I had hands on experience with a lot of them it's basically a psycho stimulant drug that is uh, basically a type of amphetamine uh, they used it to describe it for ADHD, like I say, but also to prevent narcolepsy. Uh, and it's considered to be uh, a cognitive enhancer. In fact, before it even sort of come over to esports, one of the things that it was really popular for in America was if you had to study and you had exams, you had to pull all-nighters and you wanted to stay focused, you would do Adderall. Uh, and that was, that was, again, sort of as I started researching what it was, that was pretty much what it was synonymous with uh in fact you probably tune into something i don't know like a fucking dawson's creek or whatever and, and be like man i gotta got some adderall i gotta test you know it was just that was the sort of drug of choice it became less about adhd and sort of more about doing it recreationally whenever you needed to sort of focus now th this makes it very good within the uh, kind of uh, within the structure of how a LAN tournament works, and that was the other thing I wanted to sort of bring to the table. Why? Why would we need? Why would anyone want performance enhancing drugs in esports? Well, of course, first of all, you've got the idea that just of any performance enhancing drug, and that is that. Well, anything that's going to give you a competitive edge over everyone else, you you, you take it, use it, whatever. Now, actually. A lot of the players that I spoke to that were talking about when they were using Adderall, they were saying that it was just almost like a requirement. Like, you had to do it. And all those people I spoke to from the MLG and the Halo scene were like, we knew everyone else was doing it, so we didn't even feel bad about it. That's kind of like the Lance Armstrong argument. But equally, they said, like, you're playing all day, every day, for like three days. There's delays, there's interruptions, there's huge epic games with massive overtimes you may be getting four five six hours sleep a night how are you supposed to stay at peak performance levels in those environments and pretty much all of the players said that actually 
one of the reasons we used to take Adderall and, and certainly why the players that I was just talking about used to take cocaine was like, we need to stay awake. We, we're getting no sleep and we're expected to be in the zone and perform. Sometimes against teams that have had a good night's sleep because of when their game's finished or because of how the brackets worked out. And it's just not viable to, to be focused, to be alert. So people would do a line or something to give them a bump uh, and uh, lift lift them and give them enough energy to get to the end. Um, and this was especially true before crunch games, you know, finals and, and semi-finals. Now, I, I got to say, when Semphis... Uh, this Semphis interview came out, which is why everyone's talking about it. And he said, well, Cloud9 was on Adderall at ESL uh, Katowice. And you can, and he said, you could tell from our communications, it was fairly obvious. Now, this shouldn't really be a surprise to anyone. Like, NA teams and Adderall just go hand in hand. That It's synonymous. If anyone tells you otherwise, they're just flat out lying to you. But it does seem a bit of a strange admission, sort of now after the fact. Like, I don't... I, I I can't believe Semphis he's always struck me as a smart guy. I think he knew what he was doing, like that this would open a massive can of worms and create this whole like hysteria, which is what we've got. You go on the front page of Reddit, everyone's like, Oh, Adderall, Adderall, uh, drugs, have we got a drug problem? What's going on? It's always been there, you just didn't know about it. And you, a lot of people just willfully ignored it. In fact, like, you know, it was you talk to anyone off the record, like at MLG or people who run gaming organizations or run tournaments, and they're like, yeah, we know players do shit at our events, but what are we going to do? So I don't, I don't really know what the motivation for Sam for saying this is, uh, but certainly I suppose it is perhaps worth mentioning, as ridiculous as it is. Yeah, a law has been broken. Like, not a law I put any particular stock in. But if you're taking prescription drugs that aren't specifically prescribed for you, that's that's a, a, a breach of law in most countries. And, of course, if you're bringing them over and distributing them to other people, that's obviously a, a, a breach as well. So that's probably something to, to, to be mindful of. But, honestly, I, I, I don't want to judge too much just on the merits of the case. Like, the fact that, oh, we did... We did, we did these drugs. I'm, I'm not really interested in that. For me, where it gets interesting is a lot of people now are saying, well, what, what are the tournament organizers going to do about it? What are tournament organizers going to do about the use of performance-enhancing drugs or even recreational drugs? What are they going to do? And this has come up before in League of Legends. And the reality is that it's so impractical to do anything about it that most that that's the reason why it's mostly been ignored now you're probably thinking well what do you mean you're a tournament you can do whatever you want well first of all you cannot supervise players 24 7 that's completely unrealistic if they want to uh take something in the hotel in the toilets uh, the venue before the venue you know you can't sit over them and watch them t 24 hours a day and it doesn't work like that in any sport so the idea of like having tournament organizers like following players around and uh, what, what have you got there man is that an m&m is that a tic tac you know like that's just fucking retarded that's never gonna that's never gonna work so you then get into a position of reactive t testing which is obviously what we know is dope testing, urine tests, blood tests. That's how it works in, in mainstream sports. So we're now saying that signing up to a tournament, you are agreeing to give a urine sample to uh, the, the tournament organizers. Well, I imagine some tournaments, who the fuck wants to do that? Like, you've got to understand that... Drugs testing, you have to have some sort of authority some, and some sort of medical supervision involved in all of it to make sure it's done in a sterile environment. There's no false positives. Then you've got to put an appeals process in place just in case. That... It's a fucking huge undertaking. And no mainstream sport does it through themselves. So the Premier League doesn't handle dope testing for the Premier League. 
or you know the the uh, people who do the Tour de France don't do the doping for the people on Tour de France. They use an outside external body. And the reason for this is you're guaranteed independence, you're guaranteed to have all the requisite expertise, and you also have none of the headache of dealing with the reality of having to take urine on certain days and chasing players up who don't want to give you urine, whether they're guilty or innocent. Because who wants to be bothered with that shit? Like, you don't go through enough in esports, you know? Now I've got to piss in a cup for you as well. But unfortunately, it seems like we are heading towards now with all of these sponsors coming on board and this big push for competitive integrity, we are heading towards a reality where people probably, give it 18 months to two years, I think we'll probably see esports drugs testing. I think it'll actually happen. Now, who can realistically pioneer and lead the way? Uh, that's a very good question because, as I said, it needs to be done by an independent and arbitrary body or... It needs to be completely self-contained and run like a dictatorship, an absolute, you know, hermetically sealed uh, tyranny where you can just say, right, you know, this, this, this is why it's, it's perfect for Riot in the LCS because they can say, look, right, we're going to drop, right, we drive you to the TV station where you play your games, we drive you back, we pay for any flights, pay for any, you know, we, we do everything. And while you're here, can you piss in this cup and give it to our resident, you know, physician or drugs tester or whatever? They dip the fucking stick in it or shake it up with the other chemicals, depending on what method they're using. And they can t t check to see what you're doing. Equally as well, you get to say what kind of drugs we're going to flag for. Now, right now, the hot topic will be Adderall. Would you want to do a test? Uh, for weed, for example, would you want to do it? Do we want to go down the idea of sports where we say players have a moral obligation not to do recreational drugs? I mean, if you were to start testing professional esports players for marijuana, I mean, fuck it, man. There's no one left, is there? Let's be fucking real. Like, there's just no one left. But that's how it works over here in the UK for sports stars. Get, get caught smoking a joint, you're in big trouble. What the fuck? I mean, it's insane. But that's just how it works. So do, do we want to put some sort of morality in? And then, okay, well, where do we draw the line? Are we going to say that you can... Weed's okay because we've got a more progressive policy in NA right now, and eventually you think that would spill over into the rest of Europe and, and the UK? Uh, but, uh, but, what, but cocaine, we're all agreed, is bad. And certainly heroin, like, I don't even know who the fuck's doing that. The idea about that being performance enhancing uh, is, is is ridiculous, but there you go. So we'll put that in there. You know, or MDMA, yeah, I guess we've got to put that in there now. You know, all of a sudden, what we're saying is that what happens outside of esports, we're now starting to drag it in. It's always been a concept that makes me feel really uncomfortable. Uh, like, I understand the need for certain jobs, like jobs where you are responsible directly for other people's safety, to have mandatory drugs testing. Uh, I, I understand that. I understand that. But there's, like, some jobs uh, over here in the UK where they've started implementing drugs testing policies, and it's like, you're just a phone jockey. You sit at a desk all day answering phone calls. Fuck it, you should be on drugs. Your job sucks. You should be giving these people fucking drugs. <laughs> to stop them going insane, to stop them losing their minds. That would make way more sense, right? But no, and, and I, I think that's really egregious. I, I think you should have two distinct lives, your, your professional life and your personal life. And never the twain should meet. If, they, if this hand over here starts telling this hand what the fuck it can be doing, then we got, we got problems and we're, we're definitely heading towards that way. In esports, I, I certainly hope we don't, but it, it wouldn't surprise me if we do. Now, getting back to the point, uh, again, th this could work in an LCS environment where everything is completely controlled, but there are legal problems about it working, uh, say, in something like Counter Strike, where the games developer doesn't just control everything from top to bottom. So, for example, let's say I was to. I'm a player, right? I'm popping some fucking Adderall before a game. I'm an idiot. And I say, sure, you can have my urine. I test positive for Adderall use. And it, let's say the tournament was DreamHack. And DreamHack say, 
Richard, you, your piss was stinking orange and it melted the cup. You're full of drugs. You can't play at a dream hack ever again. This is a disgrace. And they put a statement out, a competitive ruling. Richard Lewis banned from dream hack for having druggy piss. And you think, okay, well, now all the other leagues can follow suit. But they can't. Actually, ESL, and whether they'd ever say this publicly or not, I don't know. But ESL actually... There's legal barriers preventing them. This is why they can't mirror bans. If you get caught cheating in one league, ESL can't just say, "Yeah, fuck it, man. You gotta, you gotta uh, be banned from our league as well." They can't do it. There's there's a potential legal challenge there from the players, and they don't want to be open to that liability because they know actually legally they wouldn't be able to enforce it, and it would be the same for drug bans. So that's another thing, another reason why this would have to feed into some sort of governing body if we were to get serious about this problem. Which, by the way, I don't think is a problem. It's only a problem if the last 10 years have been a problem. Uh, which, uh, I haven't heard anyone complaining about it before. Now, but anyway, so you would need, you would need a, a arbitrary body that sits above it all. And somehow controlled all of esports and all the tournament organizers basically had sort of acquiesced and given this floating body control. It's just so unlikely to happen in esports because no one ever wants to relinquish power because when you do that, it cuts into your profitability. So no one's ever going to want to do that. In fact, everybody wants to be that body <laughs> that tells everyone else what to do. So. I, I don't really see how this can work uh, from a practical standpoint. I think, like I say, we'll probably will, within two years, get to the stage where individual tournaments are going to do spot drugs testing, but it will be a, a preventative uh, measure rather than anything else. Uh, I've currently emailed all of the leagues to ask what their plans are, whether they're going to implement some policies, whether they already have policies, and I'm waiting responses uh, for responses from them, which I'll publish. But I just wanted to sort of give some thoughts on it. Um, I, I guess ultimately that the, the long and the short of it is that you know it it's going on, and right now it's like it's like a lot of things. It's not against any rules. No one's really breaking any rules. We have no clear barriers. We have no clear regulations on performance enhancing drugs or drugs of any kind in esports. It's just we've never talked about it. And because we've never talked about it and chose to ignore it, we end up in a situation here where the community are ready to be whipped up into a fever pitch about something that has always existed, that has been around for the longest period of time, just unbeknownst to them. So this isn't something that's going to be uh, brought in overnight. This is actually going to be quite a huge progressive step. And when we finally get to a point where we can implement a policy, that's going to be a watershed moment in esports history. Be under no illusion. That's huge for us as sort of, again, being on parity with real sports. But all of these people that are like, hysterically clamoring for like cloud nine to be sanctioned and stuff get a fucking grip of yourselves guys like really think long and hard about it what rule has been broken here right there, there aren't any rules in place second of all some ex-teammate comes out and says a bunch of shit in an interview you can't it does you know look he's probably not lying in fact he's not lying is he right it just it, it happened but the, regardless of that you can't without proof you can't then start demanding people do something about it it just can't work like that you cannot you cannot promote mob justice it's not healthy for any scene uh, or, or just healthy for society in general so i think everyone just needs to calm the fuck down if you do your research on it and you speak to people you'll realize this has been around for a long long period of time partly down to how badly tournaments are run Partly down to players, now it's actually worth going the extra yards and putting chemicals in your body in a bid to win. But it's something that isn't going to change rapidly. We're going to have to gradually implement things. And then eventually we'll get to a stage, we'll get to a consensus. But we need to have a very serious, sensible conversation about it all. What are we going to ban? What aren't we going to ban? Who's going to do the tests? Who's going to 
confirm the the uh, veracity, the legality of those tests. If a player fails a test, what? Who? How are we going to compel an organisation to sanction them? How are we going to get everyone on board to unilaterally ban them? There's so many questions here, uh, and so many impracticalities. I, you know, I, I said in the past, you could probably find it. Last time I, I talked about drugs and esports, I, I said pretty much uh, that I just I don't see how it can ever be brought in. I don't see how it can ever be, you know put upon the, the the players it just seems to be ridiculous but increasingly it seems to be that there's a demand for it uh so anyway yeah just a few thoughts about that one um and you can give me your thoughts in the comments which is something that youtubers like to say apparently anyway uh thanks for watching see you on the next video